Hey there, everyone. I hope you are all doing good. Today, we are going to check the Wave Packets by Oza. <laughs> To introduce you to the module, it's a complex mix of an envelope generator or contour generator and an LFO. But it has a lot of tricks up its sleeve. So it's, it's, it's a digital module. It takes what is my favorite way of doing a modular digital module, which is a very analog interface where everything has a simple function, a knob per function. It's, it's really easy to operate, but it's like basically a very complex patch inside. So first you have a four, actually five stage envelope. <laughs> triggering this from key step over there. It's not really an ADSR, it's a bit different. What makes this special are those sliders. Those sliders actually control the output level of each of the three main parts of the envelope. So for example, if I remove those, also by the way, of course, I have the simple contour output here going just to the VCA of this 810. <laughs> Let's try to make a, like a sn simple snappy kind of envelope. So this is our first stage, T1 and T2 together. So if I have all the sliders at zero, I have no sound. Here I will have a ri the rising, this becomes a sort of attack, and then sustain, then decay. And here, after sustain, so when I release the key, we have another attack decay cycle. So it, you see, it's, it's really not a normal ADSR. It's basically like three attack decay envelope, one after the other with each their levels, timing and the sustain in the middle. So with all this, you can create some quite unusual shape. So it makes something very fast and wobbly. Yeah, if I just... Also, worth mentioning that in gate mode, so the time I take to press the key matters, but we have a trigger mode where you can just press the key and it will go through the whole thing. So you see, you can make some pretty wild, unusual envelope shapes. And it will either follow your keyboard playing or trigger. And you can also cycle. If you maintain your key pressed, it will restart at the end. So you can make some, again, some weird envelope shape. Yeah, if you remove the gate, it will cycle all the time. Let's write a very simple sequence. sequences as well. At first I was a bit uh, confused by how it worked, but it's quite fun because you can have very interesting shapes. Okay, so next up we have the LFO. 
that starts here. So it's almost two modules, the contour and the LFO section. I say LFO, but it's also audio rate, so we'll see that later. So if I take this output, which is only the LFO, this output is only the envelope, this one only the LFO, I will patch this to the filter. Okay, now that's the very interesting part of the module. We have three frequency knobs, because during each of these steps we can have a different speed. It goes slower, so we can hear the full. So see, it starts slow, get fast in the middle, and slow again, but a bit faster than this. And we have a slide control that glide between those during this whole travel. So it makes this module very good at making like super wobbly stuff. I find that it shines in the long, evolving notes. Here now we have the waveform. I mean the sine wave now, but we have continuous morphing triangle, sort of weirder shape, ramp, square, and pulse width square. I do like the square very much, especially with resonant filters like this. Okay, so what are those things? Those are mix of the two signals. So for example, if I take, let me remove this, this output is the contour, and within the contour, there's the LFO. So yeah, it's only this output to the control of my VCA. So this is basically like if you patched your LFO to a VCA and then control the output of this VCA by the envelope. But it's right there. Here we have the envelope. And when the envelope is not at max, we have the LFO instead. So it's basically the LFO on top of the volume of those sliders. So it's less there. You can less hear it, but it's still make everything wobbles. And then this one is a bipolar version of this. So this one is only unipolar. So but let me do something like this is going to be controlling our filter. <laughs> You could put that in audio rate, as I was saying. So yeah, not your usual envelope and LFO here. Okay, now to demonstrate the power of this, I'm just going to keep the gate, and we are not going to send any signal of this synth to its VCA. And if I patch my LFO signal, so I have LFO here, envelope as control. As I am in audio rate, yeah, you can hear. And yeah, that's the fun part. You have a sort of synth that goes to three different frequencies. Let's try to have it. center so they are all the same and I could send one volt proactive here in this input so now I can play it so it becomes a synth voice and actually you don't even need a VCA if you take this output it's the bipolar result of the LFO at audio rate, 
encapsulated, I don't, I don't remember how they say it in the manual, but inside the contour. So if I put some initial gain here, I have no control over this VCA, it's just this output now. I could actually just take the audio straight there. It will be, it will be way too loud. Yeah, it's clipping as hell. From there, as you have all the other outputs, you can start to self-patch and make, like, control the wave shape, for example, with the only the contour. So now, instead of doing this, let's send that to one of the input of the filter. Let's take our envelope back to control the VCA. So this is my oscillator here. Saw wave going inside the filter. And here I have this guy. And now I can have Of frequency within, so with no glide, you can almost have some sort of arpeggio going on. It's pretty, pretty interesting. And we could still use the other outputs to control stuff, like the filter, for example. Which give us a pretty complex sound from a quite simple Roland-style voice and just one module that does envelope LFO and another oscillator. Let's go for a quick jam. I'm triggering the wave packet with one trigger out of the 880 and I will play the pitch through the keyboard. And the oscillator is also going to the filter like before, basically the same patch. I'm here with um, another setup. I wanted to show how this wave packet could behave in a bigger scenario with a 
her old big system. So here's the patch that I've done. Spring Reverb is the Fostex 3180. So what is the wave packet doing in there? So this is the main sequence. I have plugged the LFO output to the mod bus here. So the tree frequency of the wave packet modulates all the parameters here on the DPO in quite a dramatical way. Then I have this little i hat sort of things with the resonating contour LFO output that's ducking the low pass here on that little percussion thing. Also worth mentioning that the LFO is synced here. I think the F sync sent a clock from the Tempe. I just made it faster. Then I also have the contour alone controlling the level of this delayed signal here. So once in a while I have weird delay happening. like the way it sounds. Just before I, I had made a little beat recorded on the Morphogene. This is the mix of the two. Here is another patch using the audio rate function of the module. So I have used the square wave of the DPO to sync the F-sync input, to sync the oscillation. Then I recorded a little sequence into the morphogene, reversed it, and now we are basically listening to this sequence, which is the original one. So I'm not using any VCA or anything, I'm just taking the bipolar output of this one, which is the frequency inside the contour in a bipolar fashion. So basically, your wave inside the envelope, as if it was in a VCA. You can kill the sound here. And this is the reversed, delayed version of the sound that was recorded. It's a bit buggy, I don't know why, but anyway. And here, you can play with what I've done here. And it is synced, and both the wave packet and the DPO are getting the same one volt per octave. This will remain in tune. So let's tap another tempo for this sequence. make it longer. Now I can change the rate in there, get different pitches that are still related to what we had before, and create that whole weird mixture. self-patch this. So 
this time I'm going to use the LFO mode. And I'm going to use this to trigger events. To make it very simple, I have a slow clock from the Tempe triggering the whole cycle. And I'm taking the LFO out in uh, like the sharpest pulse waveform. And it's just striking that Optomix with a sequence. Yeah. What's fun here is that we could hold down this button, which is the only thing that has a few hidden functions in there, to make to link basically the timing of the of the envelope of the contour with the timing of the LFO. So let's press this down. Let's see it changed colors. Done. And as it is all synced, it should all become more rhythmically normal, let's say. Let's try to make it a sort of ping-pongy thing. Cool. Let's see what happens if we use the slide thing. Cool, let's make the last part longer. Let's add some bubbles from the echophone. This is fun. Just to add something, let's use this uh, wave to control the index of the small vibrato that I've programmed here. It does make some fun things. More pitch weirdness. Okay, there's a last thing I haven't talked about, it's that DCV thing, which is uh, a control over the sliders. So it's not, you, can, you cannot choose any of those sliders, it's just add or subtract from the level of all of those at the same time. So here is a nice little sequence. The envelope is sent to control the level of the QPAS VCA. I'm going to use that CV over there because I've stored the sequence in René and now I can basically create some accents. We'll note that to the frequency. This should give us some cool funk. Oh, my cat wants to participate. As always. Instead of a sequence or something like this, you could use some random voltages. Even use an LFO, so we, which will add some frequency uh, amplitude, basically, and modulation. Is an LFO right? It's cool to have the attenuator. You can send any kind of modulation to it. It's particularly fun when used in conjunction with the resonating output. Because like the less envelope you have, the more LFO you hear. So at some points you hear more the contour and at some other you hear more the LFO. I think it's quite fun. Thank <laughs> you.
Funny hat, oh, you're right. I almost forgot to mention those two outputs, which are logic outputs. This one is the pretty classic end of cycle. So I'm triggering the envelope with the pressure point here. And something happened at the end of all this. But the most interesting part for me in this module is the end of stages. So you have an end pulse at the end of each of the three segments of the envelope. Which I've now patched to René and a few other stuff. And you can use it in conjunction with the other one. So now at the end, the last pulse will also have a pitch envelope. This is mapped to the feedback, just trying out stuff. So it's a kind of a three in a row burst generator. That's it. I hope it was helpful, even maybe interesting. Many thanks to Oza Audio to have sent me this demo unit so I could demonstrate it to you. Go check out their website if you want more information about this. You can buy some of those things from the affiliate links below if you want to help the channel. You can uh, go have a look at my Patreon where you will find some samples from this session and where you can actually subscribe to some teaching session if you want. Feel free to leave any comments, like, subscribe and uh, be uh, an algorithmically good person to me. <laughs> so thanks again for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.